All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. The name of the video is uh, Iran's Secret Weapon Revealed. Doomed Ballistic Missiles can launch 100,000 missiles in minutes. Guys, um, sounds frightening. Let's go, <laughs> let's go ahead and check it out, guys. Let's, let's see where this takes us. Hey there, welcome back to the Noctis on YouTube. Bro, you're super animated. The ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas has raised serious oh, no. concerns on the international stage. Okay. There is potential for this conflict to not only involve groups backed by Iran. Guys, you do realize the last time I looked at one of these videos, my channel got taken off the map, guys. Such as Hezbollah, but also to spread to pro-Iran right. countries like Syria and, of course, Iran itself. Iran has strongly warned Israel about the possibility of further escalation if attacks on Gaza, Palestine, are not halted promptly. As a background, Iran has long been known as a staunch supporter of Hamas and Hezbollah in Lebanon, even strongly suspected of providing funding and weapons to Hamas. Given the potential I mean, most likely. for escalation, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has not ruled out the possibility of direct Iranian involvement in the conflict. The escalation of this conflict could affect stability in the surrounding region, especially with Iran's deadly military capabilities. Iran is known to possess... Guys, it's 100% going to affect... Uh, everything in the region if they do have something that can that can fire 100 missiles in minutes guys 100,000 missiles in minutes it's, it definitely has the ability to, to uh, for the most part control the narrative advanced and deadly missile weaponry making it a significant threat in the Middle East region let's take a look and delve into some of Iran's deadly military weaponry that could pose a threat to the Middle East region especially Israel and its allies Tactical Sayyad Missile. The Tactical Sayyad... Hold on, 100,000 of those? That size? ...missile system owned by the Iranian okay. military represents a pinnacle of defense technology advancement achieved by the country in recent years. This air defense system has been designed to counter medium-range aerial threats, ensuring national airspace security against potential attacks. One of the terrifying capabilities of Tactical Sayyad is its ability to detect and track up to 24 targets at a range of 180 kilometers. This capability allows the system to have a better picture of approaching potential threats, enabling a faster response to these threats. Furthermore, the system can simultaneously engage between 6 to 12 targets at a range of 120 kilometers, demonstrating its sophistication and effectiveness in dealing with multi-target threats. Another prominent feature of Tactical Sayyad is its short-range self-defense mechanism. This mechanism represents a significant improvement from Iran's previously operated air defense systems, Kordad 3 and Chordad 15. By having an integrated self defense system, Tactical Sayyad is expected to be more resilient against close range threats, further strengthening Iran's air defense line. I mean, listen, it sounds like, for the most part, this is all defensive, and uh, every single country on this planet has the right to protect, to uh, to defend themselves from outside forces, right? Um, but all right, let's get it. Not only does it have a capable self-defense mechanism, but the developers of Tactical Sayyad have also innovated by integrating radar and missile launchers on the same vehicle. This integration is claimed to enhance the system's overall agility. With radar and missile launcher integration, the response to emerging threats is expected to be even faster, optimizing Sayyad's performance in fulfilling its mission. On the international stage, Iran has showcased a replica of the Tactical Sayyad Air Defense System at the 2023 International Military Forum in Russia. This launch signifies that the system has successfully passed all tests and is operational. Oh, so it was active. All right. 
This is an important step that demonstrates Iran's readiness and confidence in this air defense system. The tactical Sayyad air defense system utilizes the Bavar 373 missile, Sayyad 4B, which is a crucial component of the system. This missile complements the air defense system, ensuring that Iran has the necessary technology to protect itself from aerial threats. Yeah, guys, I see nothing wrong with, with, with this. I mean, the need for it is pretty much pretty crazy, but you know, listen, the worlds we live in, uh, unfortunately, with you know two two battles going on over there, guys. I mean, I can only imagine. This is also that region. You never know, right? Um, so the ability to defend yourself from anything is fine. Again, um, I'm looking at it. It looks technologically sound. I mean, if they, if they were able to show it at some type of convention and and um, to show what their overall capabilities are for defense, I mean, I see nothing wrong with it. Um, but again, it's sad that it's needed, but you know, different story. Overall, the tactical Sayyad missile system represents Iran's efforts to continuously enhance its air defense capabilities against potential threats. Kamikaze Shaked 136 Drone The Kamikaze Shahed 136 drone has garnered attention due to its deadly capabilities. Originally manufactured by Iran, this Whoa. drone found its way into the Russian military arsenal, where it was given a new name, Jeran 2 by Russia. This rebranding may be an attempt by Russia to reduce its reliance on Iranian military technology while still utilizing the sophistication of this drone. In terms of specifications, Bro, a kamikaze drone. Guys, it flies. I'm sure it just, it just goes straight up and then like right above the target, it probably just, again, kamikazes itself all the way to the ground hitting its target. I mean, uh, the science behind it is is interesting. I mean, it's, it's a, again, I'm not a, a weapons guy like that. Not like this type of thing. I, you know, I definitely like firearms, but you know, this is this is something different, bro. The Shahid 136 <laughs> drone bro. is a large package with a weight of around 200 kilograms. Okay. However, like it's not pounds. its weight that makes it intriguing, but rather the explosives it carries okay. and the advanced optical system located in its nose for precision attacks. It also boasts impressive speed, with the ability to reach speeds of over 185 kilometers per hour. This drone can even be launched from a truck, showcasing. I think that's like a little over 100. Facing its flexibility in various operational scenarios. Miles an hour. The name Kamikaze in Shahed 136 is not just for show. This drone, yeah, that's with not its coming payload back. of explosives, right. acts as a projectile that after attacking a target will self-destruct. This is a significant tactical... Yeah, that's a lot more offensive than defensive, but still. This is a significant tactical advantage as it eliminates the possibility of this equipment falling into enemy hands. Its range is also noteworthy. The drone is estimated to travel up to 2,000 kilometers at speeds of around 136 kilometers per hour, making it an ideal tool for long-range missions. Oh. Yeah, definitely offensive. One of the most interesting technological features of Shayed 136 is its inertial navigation system. Inertial this system navigation. calculates the drone's position through computer sensors, motion and rotation, ensuring that the drone stays on the correct path during its mission. And this was developed in Iran? Iran's presence as a producer of drones like Shahid 136 not only demonstrates the country's military technology capabilities, right. <laughs> but also signifies a step forward in the era of drone warfare. With countries like Russia showing interest in this technology, Iran has established itself as a key player in this evolving global defense landscape. Yeah, I can definitely see them kind of taking a, a front, a, the front stage, most likely within the next 20, 30 years. Uh, based off, if they're the ones, if they have these this type of technology over there right now, um, give them 30 to 40 years, um, it's, it's going to be interesting in what they're able to actually create. Over time, the sophistication and usefulness of drones like Shahed 136 will continue to improve, enriching the defense arena 
and opening up more possibilities in modern military conflicts. It also looks to be like rocket propelled. Sejil Missile The Sejil Missile represents a significant advancement in Iran's missile defense capability with a unique design and technology that sets it apart from other missiles developed in the region. This missile introduces a significant evolution in Iran's missile program, presenting a new threat to its potential adversaries. The first version of this missile, Sejil-1, was a two-stage surface-to-surface <laughs> ballistic missile that was first tested by Iran in 2008. Okay, what's the operational distance, firstly? Um, that's probably the most important thing. Um, how far can it actually go? The primary uniqueness of this missile lies in its use of solid fuel. And that'll literally tell you, uh, you know, uh, who is kind of at risk if uh, they were to, I guess, um, um, have to choose my words very wisely, guys. Uh, if they were to kind of go up against them, um, who would be at risk? I guess, again, based purely off of their... Um, the operational distance Max which distance. not only reduces launch time but also enhances its mobility solid fuel provides a significant advantage over liquid fuel used in many other missiles allowing for quicker and easier launches Sejil 2 first tested in 2009 represents further development of the Sejil design like its predecessor it uses solid composite fuel Sejil 2 is capable of covering significant distances over 2,000 kilometers, according to reports. In fact, its ability to launch at varying angles adds to its flexibility, <laughs> making it right. harder to anticipate and counter by enemy missile defense systems. And what's the payload? One particularly interesting aspect of the Sejil missile is that unlike many of Iran's previous missiles, it bears no resemblance to missile technology from countries like North Korea, Russia, China or Pakistan. This suggests that Iran may have reached a new level of sophistication in designing and developing its missiles, moving away from dependence on foreign technology. The U I mean, nothing wrong. I mean, again, uh, defend your country. Use of solid fuel in the Sejil missile also reduces the amount of warning that can be given because we can't be hypocritical here guys right? under no circumstance are we allowed to well some people would like to be hypocritical but i don't think we really should be hypocritical like look at our stores in the united states of america i think it's completely fine for another country to have at least at the very least one percent of it because that's probably what it looks like about one percent of what we have guys um it's defend your countries given before long that's the message of today. Launch compared to liquid-fueled missiles. This allows for faster and less detectable launches, providing a tactical advantage. Faster and less detectable launches. Gadir class, submarine. Another deadly weapon in Iran's military arsenal is the Gadir class submarine, okay. known for its ability to operate in shallow waters. Iran is known to have several types of submarines. However, the Gadir class submarine, with a weight of around 150 tons, is particularly lethal and versatile. Yeah, because it's tiny. Look at it. Making it a significant asset in any conflict. And that's what makes it probably, yeah, exactly, an asset in any conflict. That's what probably makes it crazy, is the fact that it's absolutely minuscule. In comparison. One of its key strengths lies in its small size, which makes it exceptionally difficult to detect and track. In its operations, each Gadir class submarine carries two 533 mm torpedo tubes and has the capability to lay mines. Reports suggest that these submarines also possess impressive troop mobilization capabilities. Additionally, they are capable of transporting and deploying special forces into enemy territory. Like other mini-submarines, the Gadir class, with its diesel-electric propulsion, can okay. only carry two... Let's look at it. Um, let's see, two torpedoes, a sparse crew room. Um, based off of the size that we're looking at, at least right here, uh, of the actual, like, command station, guys, I don't, I'm not sure they're going long distances with this, guys. All right, at least. Um, because where are the people sleeping? It does say sparse crew room, but if this is the size of the 
command center, let's say, let's call it, right? Um, then those the, the crew stations are, are absolutely minuscule. Two heavy torpedoes, such as the YT-534 UW-1. The Gadir-class submarine has a surface weight of approximately 115 tons and a submerged weight of around 120 tons. It measures about 29 meters in length and 2.5 meters in width and can reach a speed of 11 knots while submerged. Okay. The Gadir class employs a tactic known as traffic blocking in the Strait of Hormuz. It travels on the surface and blends in with fishing fleets. When a target is reported, the submarine, crewed by 18 personnel, submerges to carry out its attack. 18 people fit in there? Khalij Ifar's missile. Another deadly missile in the Iranian military's arsenal is the Khalij Ifar's missile, also known as the Persian Gulf missile. It is a okay. supersonic anti-ship ballistic missile designed supersonic. to destroy enemy targets and naval assets at sea. This missile, derived from the Feta 110 missile, was officially unveiled in February 2011, along with the announcement by Iranian military officials that they were mass producing it. Although the Iranian government continues to demand increased precision to less than 10 to 15 meters, less than six months after its second test, Iranian missile experts managed to improve its precision to less than 8.5 meters. The Khalij Fars <laughs> ballistic missile. Yeah, that won't even matter. I'm telling you, if, if that missile gets within that small, minuscule distance, the explosive that comes off of it, yeah, it wouldn't matter, bro. So with that, its that supersonic projectile, yeah. carries a warhead. Just call that perfect, it's fine. Weighing 650 kilograms. It combines smart guidance systems, the ability to evade interception by anti-missile systems, and high-precision features. Reports suggest that the Khalij Bars missile is the most advanced and crucial missile for the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. IRGC Navy. One of the distinctive features of this missile is its supersonic speed and trajectory. While most other missiles travel at subsonic speeds and cruise, the Khalij Fars missile ascends vertically after launch, moves at supersonic speeds, locates targets through intelligence systems, locks onto targets, and hits them. Right. Furthermore, <laughs> so, the single stage solid fueled missile has a So what is making it what is it ma what is making it supersonic though? Is it the propulsion aspect of it or is it the shape of it? Uh maybe the the, the front cone of it. What exactly guys I need more I have I need more answers, bro. Range of approximately things. 300 <laughs> kilometers and can be fired from triple launchers. Okay. An IRGC Navy commander in Iran stated that this newly developed missile would force Whoa. the enemy to reconsider its calculations due to its unique features. An Israeli defense analyst also pointed out that the Khalij Bars missile would pose a threat to U.S. aircraft carriers in the Strait of Hormuz. Intercontinental Missiles Currently, Iran's military capabilities are a matter of concern as the Middle Eastern nation faces tensions with the United States. This is in part due to Iran's missiles, which have been accused of causing the downing of Ukraine International Airlines some time ago. According to reports, Iran possesses four types of missiles, okay. each with different ranges, ranging from 500 kilometers to 3,000 kilometers. The short-range missile in Iran's possession is one second, guys. kilometers, ranging from 500 kilometers to 3,000 kilometers. The short-range missile in Ooh. Iran's possession is called Shabab-2, which is a modification of the Soviet Scud missile. Iran has also developed a new missile, Shabab-2. Yeah, the Scuds were super old. Soviet Scud missile. Iran has also developed a new missile, Shabab-2, based on the Scud. Shabab-2 is capable of striking Gulf countries within a radius of 500 kilometers. Ugh. Following Shabab-2, the next missile in okay so basically what they're trying what it looks like is they are trying to be the superpower in that area 
Um, that's what that's what it sounds like with all the investment they're doing here. Um, they seem to most likely be the most well armed country in the in the area. Because in Iran's arsenal is the Zulfikar, like. which is part of the Fateh missile series. The Zulfikar missile has been used to target ISIS cells located 600 kilometers from the launch site. Its maximum range is approximately 700 kilometers. For medium range capabilities, Iran relies on the Khorram Shar missile. Similar to the two previous missiles, Iran developed Khorram Shar based on another missile, North Korean, with a range of 2,000 kilometers. Finally, Iran possesses long range missiles, such as the Sumar, which can reach targets up to 3,000 kilometers away from the launch site. Yeah, guys, I did not know that they were packing like that. All right. And that's just pure honesty. I never really thought about what they actually had over in, in Iran. Never in my life, actually. Now I feel like I should be looking into what some other countries do actually have. I knew that we ourselves in America are absolutely ridiculous with this. So, um, <laughs> but this stuff here, what they have. Um, for the region, I think that they probably stand out to the point where they easily can become a superpower in the area. And if they do start uh, producing and then selling to other foreign nations, then... <sighs> okay, maybe an issue goes. But all right, listen, <laughs> you guys all have an absolutely amazing day. Enjoy your day thoroughly.